Yes, hello friends. Thank you for joining together today. This is Talk To Me Thursday. We're going to have a wrap. And that means that we're going to discuss anything that you want to talk about right here on Grace Cafe. Don't forget this is our breakdown. Uh, no, not break. <laughs> Shut down. Shut down session. Um, forever how long? You know, maybe maybe you'd like to tell us um, in some manner how the shutdown has impacted your life on a practical uh, basis. Some of the hoops that you now are going to have to jump through as we deal with this. Or, you know, eh, you don't have to talk about that. Let's talk about something else. But whatever you want to discuss, that's what we're here for. And uh, thank you. I'm outdoors. I tried to get to uh, my place, Jerusalem, Jerusalem Village, and uh, wasn't able to get there in time. And I had uh, a couple of technical advantages here. Actually, you know, we're a little stronger on our internet. We got some things uh, upgraded yesterday, and they seem to be working quite well. So just had to double check that. Eric, thank you so much for your piano rendering. Okay. All right. Well, where is the area? Okay. And uh, <clears throat> I just sent out the notification to all of our Facebook watchers. Listen, you know, I mentioned in the, uh, in the uh, text message, if you, um, those of you that are on Facebook, you can start a watch party. Only let's, let's, let's minimize the party but you can start a watch edification, <laughs> and uh, that would be a, a blessing. And uh, amazing that you can do that. Uh, simply follow the directions that are in there, and uh, see if you can't uh, activate some some listeners to join us here on Talk to Me Thursday. So please get your your questions, your comments, anything that you want to discuss. As it says in the text that I sent, ask us anything and we will get it to the Word of God. Father, and we also thank you for the, the amazing ministry of God the Holy Spirit who unites our hearts by faith. And perhaps there's someone who is just uh, discovering this broadcast or stumbling into this broadcast, God, that you would manifest your Son to them. Give them a revelation of the glorious gospel, that which you have accomplished and finished on the cross for their sins, and given the gift, giving the gift of eternal life. We thank you and ask this in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. <clears throat> now I'm getting a lot of peeking on the audio. Uh, can someone tell me if, there's, if the audio is okay? Because uh, I think it's picking up the wind. It's it's not too gusty, but um, maybe there were some adjustments that the software has made. So if the audio is A-OK, -okay, just give a Y or an N on that, and I would appreciate that. We can uh, expect to... Uh, audio is good. Thank you, Reggie. All right, good. So... I was <clears throat> on the phone with a dear friend uh, this morning, and it was basically uh, how he was working his job and to prevent uh, prevent any human contact. <laughs> yeah, he uh, you know he was uh, working with an IT group that was reconfiguring laptop computers to get the to their salespersons, and he would put the laptop in the trunk, drive it to the location, the person would come out, he would pop the trunk, stay in the driver's seat, pop the trunk, and the person would get their, uh, their device, and uh, then they would go. We got some youngins here. They should be in school. Truancy. No, of course not. They can't be in school. So, uh, that is affected. He, they're still working, but they have to, uh, you know, go through and make
make these adjustments. Now, uh, just Saturday, last Saturday, uh, Maryland was mandated that if you go out anywhere in public, you must have a face mask. And uh, so you put that on, you go in the store, and you are the uh, masked bandito. <laughs> uh, you know, it's pretty insane, but this is, this is where we are for the moment. And uh, how has that impacted you? Maybe some of you haven't gotten your masks yet. And uh, you're using an old sock. God bless you. Okay. Uh, and uh, maybe that's not mandated in your state. Is that, is that true for you, R. Campbell? Do you have to uh, strap a mask on your face to go out in public and uh, make an appearance to people? them not knowing who you are. Ridiculous, he says, yes. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Some kind of way we've got to get about our business and, uh, you know, the, the, the mantra, the mantra is social distancing. Social distancing. That means humans apart, okay? Not together, apart. Some people would think that's not a bad idea. <clears throat> Maybe particularly thinking about people in their own families. But nevertheless, this is the uh, this is the social discourse for our time today. Not required yet. Oh, Marie, you don't not yet. You know, I thought London, because of its you know the population density, that uh, it would be doing that. But you know, it's it's also interesting, and uh, this is might be something that you want to discuss. How um, liberal, meaning not the political slant, but how freely um, local magistrates, and I'm talking about uh, lo local government, even not just from the president and the uh, task force stating, you know, the CDC and these organizations, but actually uh, we had the mayor of Habit and Grace, all right? Now we got 11,000 households, 11,000 homes, and so he declared a state of emergency, and all that really did was, like, give him the, 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 the you know, the right to state, you know, when, where, how, and why, and for how long, but... <clears throat> Uh, some some regions, you know, that kind of influence, which is outside of the realm of elected officials, okay, uh, and sometimes it's bureaucrats that uh, make that kind those kinds of decisions, impeding upon personal <clears throat> personal liberties, okay, constitutional rights in some cases, okay, but regardless. That is, uh, that is the state of the state, state of the town, state of the city, uh, you know. So, these are the things that we're, we're dealing with. But, again, we don't have to talk about that. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not gleeing in discussing these matters, unless you want to talk about it. But, how, how, how has, uh, <clears throat> how's your prayer life been? And what, what do you pray for? When you pray, as it says in Romans chapter 13, those that are in authority. So, uh, Boris Johnson, I believe, uh, Marie, uh, I think it was a clever move for Trump to leave it up to the end. Of, you know, there you go. Uh, uh, Boris Johnson, uh, you know, had, had, he had COVID, and uh, he's better, and he's come through. And I, you know, it's got to be that prayer, Prayer was one of the keys, not one of the keys. You know, what we see and what we know about um, God in the details, the Lord Jesus Christ in, in the matters that matter to men, it matters to him, okay? And when, our, when the people of God cry out, the Lord, the Bible says, hears us. Then I was thinking of this, and I thought this was very interesting. The governor... The governor of New York, okay, uh, was extolling on how the numbers were starting to decline in New York. 
And he said, it wasn't because of this. It wasn't because of that. It wasn't because of God. He said that. And I, I viewed the video twice. He says, these kids are having a great time. Okay, so, and then somebody followed up on that, called him on the carpet, says, listen, Governor, you can make all the comments you want, but it's not wise to impugn God. <laughs> so it's not wise to impugn the Lord. So, <clears throat> so Marie, we're glad that uh, <clears throat> your, your prime minister is getting back into the driver's seat. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of money being thrown at this problem, and uh, I, I got a I got a uh, interesting verse out of Ecclesiastes. And uh, see the Bible, the Bible talks talks reality. <laughs> oh yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, so let's let's take a look at this wisdom literature. I'm so glad. Yes, let's go here. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, a lot of money is being thrown at this problem, and as 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 a uh, you know. As it says, <clears throat> here it is, Ecclesiastes uh, 7.12 and 10.19, two verses here, 7.12 and 10.19 of Ecclesiastes. 7.12 says this, for wisdom is a defense and money is a defense, okay? Uh, then it says this. Uh, in, that, in Ecclesiastes 10.19, a feast is made for laughter and wine makes merry, but money answers all things. Well, remember that uh, Solomon, when he was writing uh, the, the three books, you know, it's uh, Song of Solomon and Ecclesiastes, or just the two books, two books, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. He was coming up out of a deep uh, backslidden condition Okay. And also, he framed everything based in the book of Ecclesiastes on that which is under the sun, under the sun, meaning human experience, uh, natural human experience. And uh, this is why he, you know, he cites this. So he sees, he sees the recourse of men when they get a problem or when they get a situation, they turn to money. For us as believers, we stay with God. And as Marie said, it's all in God's hands ultimately. I feel sorry for people walking around in fear. Well, you know, this is interesting. And <clears throat> because what does the Word of God say about uh, that which addresses fear? That's a question for our viewing audience. What does the Bible say about fear? Uh, addressing fear, and uh, maybe we can we can jump in this because it's it's something I think that is very very powerful, and uh, and we need to understand it because this is what we're going to be saying to people as part of our our explanation of why we have peace and not fear, why we why we are, as um, uh, my friend in New Jersey said, he's, he's concerned, but he's not worried. Concerned and not worried. What, Reggie, what do you think of that, being concerned, being able to be concerned, but not worry? What does that mean? What do you think that means? I'm provoking your thinking, because this is Talk to Me Thursday, and uh, I'm outside. <laughs> sun has gone in so it's a little cooler and there's a piece of breeze but i'm all right i'm i'm so much enjoying uh that they are not made perfect 
in love. Okay, that's First John. That's very good, Marie. Um, perfect love does what? <clears throat> we know nothing happens without God. Okay, yeah, Marie, here's something interesting. I know people who would agree uh, with you on that, and, and we would call that, let's call it, you know, the sovereignty of God. You know, God in his sovereign will is over all, and, and that's true. But what else does the Bible teach uh, relative to men, relative to you and and I that that uh, is also involved with uh, God. Yes, casts out fear. So, what about what's what's the the uh, forecast that the Word of God says that in the end times, in the end times, the love of many will wax cold. Wow, uh, the love of many. Not the love of money. We just talked about that. But, and uh, wow is, you know, so here we are. And, um, you know, we're in a period of time in Matthew 24 and verse 12. He says, because iniquity shall abound. Okay. The love of many shall wax cold. Now, it doesn't say when sin abounds. Uh, yeah, lovers of selves. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, okay. Recognize we are in a situation knowing that we are in God's care. Is that the uh, concern but not worry response, Reggie? That's, if that is, that's, that's a good comment. And Marie says, uh, we are walking in his plans. Okay. Yes, how, and when we walk in God's plan, that's so good. Come on, let's talk about this. When we are walking, when we say that we're walking, here's sovereignty of God, okay? And, and you know, many people think, you know, well, what is, what is? And we need to be careful about thinking rightly, correctly about the sovereignty of God because we're not talking about fate. We're not talking about, you know, the Muslim viewpoint is that anything and everything that happens is Allah's will. It's all as well that my apple had a worm in it when I bit it. See, that's not what we're talking about, sovereignty of God. There's also, uh, there's our portion. Okay, so <clears throat> we are always going to react differently to those in the world. True, because our frame of reference, Marie, that's so good, is biblical. The way that we have our viewpoint point changed because we were we were just you know we're human beings we're not angels you know you could you know feel my back I don't have you know wings budding out folded in we are not angels we are men we are human beings and and with that comes the the um, disposition like it says in Psalm 119 verse 25 my soul, it says, cleaves to the dust. Yeah, see, we all have a natural disposition in our humanity. But we are also new creations. And that new creation is perpetually, listen to this carefully, perpetually, continuously ongoing, having the mentality made new, renewed. Okay, Romans 12, 2. Paul says, I beseech you in verse 1, by the mercies of God. Yeah, by the mercies of God. You know, cease. It's a command. Cease from being conformed to this world. But be ye rather what? Transformed. Transformed by the what? The renewing of your mind. Very powerful. Okay, my young student is going in. Maybe, yeah, I guess he's being homeschooled. And that was his recess, talking to his buddy across the, across the way. That was cute. Um, yes, Marie, I was thinking the sovereignty of God contains the will of man. God has absolute free will. Man has limited free will. I mean, it's free, but it's limited. But God is the only one that has absolute uh, free will. In fact, I was, I was uh, 
covering this. I was mentioning this. Where did I put that? And uh, <clears throat> it was, you know, the idea. Oh, yeah. It was, it was today's um, uh, text devotional. Today's text devotional. Did you, did you all get that? I mean, those of you that have the app, um, you'll get it. You get it every morning. But you can also find it on um, Facebook at GG Chesapeake. Okay, GG Chesapeake. Here we go. And um, it's uh, posted there. Blind to the right. <clears throat> this is what we said. Let everything he has made give praise to him. For he issued his command, and they came into being. I love that, don't you? God spoke and created existence emerged. Okay. Then it says this, try to realize what this means. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. He made us. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. So these were two psalms. Two portions out of the book of Psalms, Psalm 148, 5 and 100 and verse 3. 148, 5 of the Psalms and 100 and verse 3. And then what we put, we said the fall, the fall put the I, the I in the I <laughs> and blinded us. We don't see God, you know, in his sovereignty. We see God as the natural man wants to compete he wants to contest he wants to uh, compare he wants to do a lot of yeah love that for psalm 100 and verse 3 thank you Maria. um this is this is the thing so yes we who do we belong to we didn't make ourselves and this is the arrogance of humanity and i say that because i i bees one Okay, I'm a human being, and there's times in which I want to, you know, get, think that I got control. I do in a limited, free volition. The limitations of my volition are governed, listen to this, the limitations of my free volition are governed by the sovereignty of God. Isn't that good? Because I'm not, I'm not in the driver's seat. You ever see that bumper sticker that says, uh, God is my co-pilot? I said, man, you need to, you need to take that bumper sticker or just draw a, an X through co. Just draw an X through co. And, you know, God is my pilot. I'm, I'm, I'm a passenger. And that doesn't mean that I am I'm passive or indifferent or you know, disconnected or abstract. What it means is that I choose. You know, many of you have flown in a plane, okay? And uh, you know, when when the plane's taken off, you got you have to be strapped in that seat belt, don't you? Yeah, you got to be strapped in the seat. And until the seat belt sign goes off, and you know that little bing, all right, then you're free. But the but the you're free to a limit. You're in the sovereignty of the of the air flight. You're not controlling the plane. You know you're just there and you know destination. You didn't have anything to do with the takeoff, flying, or landing. But you do have responsibility to stay in your seat. Okay. And uh, and then when that uh, you know seatbelt light goes off, then you can get up and move around. You know. You're free to move around, but you can't leave the plane either. <laughs> That's a good illustration of eternal security, as much as some folks like to you know, vibrate on that. Uh, yeah, so we're moving in the will of God. We are moving and choosing life today. Did you choose life today, friends? Did you choose life? Did you choose to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Or are you going to try to like na navigate this day in the carnality of your mentality that simply is like going to be limited to the dust, the dust mentality. Okay, R. Campbell says, uh, Psalms and Proverbs speak a lot about fools. Yeah, fools. And the definition in the Hebrew, R. Campbell, is that uh, the fool is, 
is a non-thinker with God. But it's all about what we're talking about right here, right now, in as much as that there's no reference to God in one's system of thinking. Listen to this very carefully. There's no point of reference. Not, God is not in the equation. So here's person A, and maybe uh, they're living by um, two of the three systems of perception. Systems of perception. First system of perception is rationalization, rationale, logic. Uh, you know, the idea that A plus B equals C, and if it don't, I don't buy it, okay? But we know that there's many variations on many equations that men previously held to that were proven to be disproven. Uh, good, you know, effectual e equation. But that's what logic does. Logic is, says it's got to make sense, it's got to add up, and that sort of thing. That's the first uh, system of perception. And there's no God in that. There's no God in logic. Okay? Logic is the God. Then there's a second system of perception, which is empiricism, which is living by sight and feelings. And opinions. we have opinions like everybody has a nose, okay? And we, we try to in our life by how we feel. Well, I don't feel like getting up, so I don't go to work. Or I don't feel like I ought to do that. Well, does it make sense? And see, and people can back, back and forth. The third system of perception is faith. Faith. By faith we perceive the things that are made this is in Hebrews chapter the things that are made are created by the things that are unseen. That's right. That every material substance and every material substance had its source from the invisible realm. Well, how do we see him who is invisible? By faith. By faith. Okay. So now God is in all of that. You know, that the only way that uh, I can perceive anything by faith is, uh, is through the work of God. Romans 10 and verse 17. So these are the things. Fools primarily those that are blind. Not necessarily blind. Um, Reggie, I mean, like in, in relation to. Um, uh, our devotional text this morning, the fall, the fall rendered the human race blind to its right relationship. So what happened in the garden when man fell? He hid himself from a sovereign, omnipresent God. Go figure, okay? God is omnipresent, all-knowing, okay? And Adam, how? And, and you know that thoughts, they actually are trying to hide from him. When people get so occupied with trying to build, they don't know how to live. When people get so occupied with the next thing so they don't have to think about eternal things. They don't think about one day you are going to die. They don't want to think, nope, don't want to think about that drip. And, and so, yeah, foolishness is uh, not just an insulting statement by God. It is a revelation of the internal uh, thinking of a man. And uh, and that's how that goes. Great, great point. Great question. Great comments. Um, we got every, everybody here today is uh, is uh, in Periscope. Do we have any Facebook in the house? Any Facebookers? Uh, anyone on Facebook that's in the house? Losing the voice? I hope not. Thank you, Sandy. Um, allergies. Notice I didn't say I have allergies. I just declared that that's allergies. Okay. Man, I was sneezing this morning. It was like, mm -hmm. and I don't know what the count is, but, and you say, why are you outside? Well, it does. It. Actually, I haven't sneezed since I've been outside. Uh, is doing a lot of sneezing inside, inside the house. So, uh, be as it may, but that's all. Uh, my 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 daughter-in-law lost her, she lost her voice. Okay, literally. I mean, not absolutely. Well, not forever, but 
<laughs> she she came she came down the stairs and and I said, "Well, good morning." And she just looked at me. She didn't say a word. And I thought, "Oh my gosh, like is she okay? Is she sleepwalking?" <laughs> and she just said, "I have no thoughts." I was like, "Oh my goodness, yeah, I, I can see. Well, I can't see. I could hear, or I couldn't hear anything because she couldn't speak." Okay, R. Campbell says Ezekiel twenty-eight fourteen calls Lucifer the anointed cherub that covers. What was it that he covered? Great question. Thank you. Wow. The anointed cherub that covered Lucifer had um, the principal responsibility and authority over the other angelic host. It's amazing. His rank was uh, preeminent. Okay. No, not pre. It was eminent. And so yes, this is how and why he was capable of leading a third of the angels uh, who became demons away from God. And, uh, and so, uh, yeah, that was, he was anointed as Lucifer, but fell and became accuser. Lucifer, accuser. Lucifer as the anointed cherub, Lucifer, who had access to the stones of fire, Lucifer, who uh, was part of the heavenly host. Hosts are the angelic creatures. Hosts, um, angels as hosts are not human. Angels as hosts are not human. Angels as hosts are not people. And so they are impersonal. Impersonal. And the most impersonal creature is Satan himself because he's you know his modus operandi is accusations for separation and so that's why he despises he despises that you and I have a personal relationship with the one who has cast him out of heaven is that good come on give the little Lord a hand I mean, God, God has done it. We, we have a victory, not because we're strong, but because he's the strongest. And I don't mean just strength in terms of power, but wisdom. Like what Marie was saying, you know, this, this wisdom of God is absolutely all-encompassing. It took care of all of the details that you and I would ever go through. See, that's what the sovereignty of God does. Then, then listen to what, what the Lord says having planned it and uh, having, uh, you know, provided everything. Listen, listen to what he says to us as creatures, as sheep in his pasture. Deuteronomy 30, verse 15. And let's get the context. Here we go. And uh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I, you know, like I'm just I'm reading the context. Pardon me for my excitement. Uh, but I was just reading this morning in Romans chapter uh, 11. And, no, 10. Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10. And it talks about, you know, the basis of salvation. You know, like who's going to go up to heaven and bring Christ down? Or who's going to go to the into the depths to bring, you know, Christ forth? And... Uh, the amazing thing is that, uh, oh yeah, I'm still, I'm still cooking. The amazing thing <clears throat> is that uh, it says neither, neither. It says that uh, the word, the word in verse 14 of Deuteronomy 30, that the word is very nigh unto you, even in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. What? Yes. I don't have to go to go get something before I... No, it's already in me. Okay? This is amazing. So then he says in verse 15, this is where we're going. See, I have set before you this day life and good, death and evil. Then verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day 
against you. Well, not against you, but forever be recorded as a finalized statement, a statement of reality that I have set before you, life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Is that wisdom? Well, we could say it as practical, practicality. Angels are amazing. The elect, of course. Ruth, thank you. They are, um, the elected ones, yes, are amazing. The fallen ones were deceived. They, they, they brought the, the counterfeit teaching of Lucifer. Uh, the, the, you know, you know his, his name means light. Lucifer, Luce, means light bringer. Okay? Light bringer, not light bearer. That's the, that's the morning star. That's Jesus Christ. But the light bringer. And then it says that, um, it, Paul says, no wonder that the, you know, Satan transforms uh, his angels into angels of light. But this is, this is where light becomes deceptive and dark. Kind of like how a moth, <laughs> a moth, is you know like drawn to you know drawn to the light to its death okay to its death so lucifer covered the angelic host yes sir yes sir he's the anointed cherubic okay let's let's go there i like thank you for that question i think you got a question in the question and uh, we're here to help Oh yeah. So let's go here. Ezekiel twenty-eight. Let's get the context, Reginald. Let's get the context. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> so, verse thirteen, uh, speaking, and this is this is this is a an analogous statement. There there was a, a literal king of Tyrus, but the spirit behind the king. So what? Ezekiel's doing it. He's removing the, the curtain. He's pulling back the curtain. And there's little, uh, you know, there's Toto. And <laughs> that's if you, you know, know uh, Wizard of Oz. And, you know, and so all of that's being revealed here. And uh, verse 13, thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. Okay. Every precious stone was thy covering, except there's three stones that the high priest had that Lucifer didn't have. That's a good study, Reggie. I'm going to check that one out. Okay. So, um, and then, uh, then it says in verse 14, you are the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set you so. You were upon the holy mountain of God, and you walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire, and you were perfect, because God did it, created and perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Now, uh, Marie, you ought to be jumping up and down because, uh, you know, the psalm, the psalm has said what in Psalm 100? <laughs> your favorite psalm? Let's see, you know, hey. Because, see, there was a source. Notice it didn't say sin, did it? Um uh, said iniquity iniquity was found in him oh wow okay no i got i got the wrong song marie sorry uh, you're 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 singing making a joyful noise you're you're rejoicing yes um and uh, and that that's that's beautiful I know where I know where we find it. We <laughs> we ourselves gotta gotta get the right. You know, it's so interesting. Uh, yeah, it is. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, that was 100 verse 3. Psalm 148 verse 5 uh, talks about the commanded praise of the Lord. I'm all the way, 
Arbor. Hey, speaks up. That's so good. So, yeah, that's the story, uh, R. Campbell, on on the uh, the uh, source of iniquity, which then listen to this. This is interesting. Source of iniquity created the old sin nature in humanity. Yes, and that's the operation operational expression of iniquity, the old sin nature, and all of its fallen attributes. Okay, um, But God deals with iniquity different than he deals with sin. Okay, And I believe it, yeah, I, I know, it's by mercy and truth. Wow. Iniquity is purged. Don't you love Bible. And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, Proverbs. Proverbs, come on, bring it. Yeah, sixteen six of Proverbs. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. So you see, notice, please. This is so rich. Mercy first. Why? You can't undo what the devil has done. You can't do what occurred in the garden with Adam. You and I can't redeem ourselves, change ourselves, improve ourselves, and become acceptable to God. We have to be the recipients of the ministry of mercy, which came in the person of Jesus Christ. Grace and truth. Grace and truth. So then, so yeah, here's truth. By mercy and what truth? Doctrine. The frame of reference that I see my condition. And the only, the only distinction between me and, and the unsaved is not the brand of sin that I commit and they don't commit, or they commit and I don't commit. The distinction is mercy and truth and doctrine. And, wow, it what? It purges. It purges. Now, you know why that's an important word? Because the New Testament word Catharizo is where we get the word catharsis, which is an absolute removal, not a covering, okay, not a not a, you know it is it is a, a, an atonement, okay, expiate, okay, cancel, yeah, all of that good stuff. So this is this is the condition of the human heart, having inherited. Through the fall in the garden, iniquity that resulted in the creation of the old sin nature. And then, listen, the old sin nature feeds from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Are you catching this? The old sin nature, reference and strength comes from forbidden fruit, whereby we we think and we, we base our conclusions and our directions on this basis of good and evil. The problem, the problem with good and evil only, because it excludes righteousness and truth, is that uh, we now live in a day where evil is called good and good is called evil. So go figure. How are you, how are you going to handle that? It's flipped. Okay, It's flipped. And, uh, and that, is the, that is the condition of the fallen world today. That's why I, I've got to live by it. There's an abundance of truth. There's an abundance of truth. And then mercy precedes truth. Mercy comes to the rescue. You know, what's that song? Uh, uh, Flo Simmons used to sing it. I think she did. Mercy rescued me. Mercy said no. <clears throat> yes. Yes, she did. Low Simmons, she's in heaven now. God bless her. God bless her. Okay, and man, she used to come out and and, and in that song, I, I don't know where we could find it because she she renders it absolutely astonishingly well. And uh, you know, Mercy says no. Mercy says no. She holler it out. Oh man, I got goosebumps on that. That's that was what a way she ministered to us. God bless her. Yeah. And. Uh, we, we are so fortunate uh, in this ministry to have the 
precious portions that we do have, you know, including you, Arbor. You're you're amazing. I remember when you used to call Grace Hour, <laughs> and you were in in your cafe, all right. And what were you doing? You were, you know, listening to the broadcast or something. Maybe you're watching on Facebook Live, and you you were you were you were had a watch party. That's right. You had a watch party, and then lo and behold. You came to America, came to America, <laughs> and came and got baptized into the Baltimore church and got married, married a lovely woman. That's amazing. You, you know, you, you know you, your, your life is a story of grace, isn't it? Arbor, you still there? Help me out. Say amen. I know it's true. Okay. Um, so, yes, the elected. Okay, any other comments or points or, or questions was this edifying give me a thumbs up if you were ed edified not entertaining we don't do entertainment here edification edification only okay some of the stuff was fun but for fun either and uh, so arbor's facebook ruth is facebook okay ruth next time if you pair if you can figure out how to do it the uh, start a uh, start a watch party. It says it on there. How to start a watch party in Facebook Live and and uh, have some friends jump in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're you're a blessing, Marie. Yeah. And uh, we're praying that you know that England kind of like this whole flatten the curve thing. You know this the curve is not going away anytime soon. It's, you know. Six weeks from now, there'll still be people that'll be passing away. And, you know, we'll be somewhat back to um, public discourse, public, you know, interaction. And this is the crazy thing is that, you know, people, people are being, you know, uh, humdrummed into thinking that, um, well, if anybody dies, you know, after we open up, and go back to our jobs and go back to school or go back to, you know, that means that we did it too soon. You watch. It's, it's, it's not going to be pleasant how people, you know what? Uh, I, I heard it put like this, and I'll, I'll close with this. They said, if, in fact, you do not feel safe in going back to work or going back out, then you are free to stay home. You are free <laughs> to stay home. But I need to be free if, I, if I've got, you know, if I feel, you know, faith. You know, there's a verse that says, I think it's in Proverbs, says, uh, <laughs> you know, the slothful man says, there's a lion out there somewhere, you know, somewhere there's a lion out there. He'll eat me. Yeah, that's true. He's like 3,000 miles away. Don't step out your front. See how practical the word of God is? So this virus is like a lion out there. Man, if I step outside, it's going to eat me up. Well, you know what? There's more people that have died from, I don't know, I was going to say aspirin overdose. There's been more people that have died in car accidents. By the way, you know, here's something else. Uh, yeah, countries who had no lockdown have fared worse. I agree, Marie. Um, and But there are... Well, how can I put this? The medical response was critical. And and the initial, the initial, you know, social distancing and all of that, well, that's going to need to go on, okay? Um, but our mentality needs to be guarded because now we've come full circle. And that is, I don't, I don't, I don't want to live in fear. I'm not going to live in fear. I'm not going to live in fear we are not going to live in fear okay we'll be wise as a serpent innocent as a dove but we ain't living in fear mm -mm. nope not going to do that because i could i could make a list of things to be afraid of i mean and and so much so that i won't even get out of the bed you know even that could be fearful <laughs> you know so that's true people are dying without jesus that's the real fear Arbor. That's the real, thank you for bringing that up. That's the real motivation. And in a way, that's why we need to get out. You know, Tony Evans, 
posted a interesting uh, sermonette, you know, a, 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 a online, and he says the salt shaker, you know, Christians need to get out of the salt shaker. We heard some analogies like that, and get sprinkled in. You know, you've been spending too much time with the salt. We need more soul winners. Come on, Arbor. I know you are. You're a great soul winner and consistent. And so I think we, we shared this, but um, we've got a, a track, Arbor, that we made. We've got a track that we made, and it says, because of uh, social distancing, and it says, knock, knock, knock. Because of social distancing, we can't knock on your door. But so we've opened our door, and we direct people to the broadcasts and to uh, the Sunday services online. And, you know, that's just one way. We leave it right on the step. Just leave it on, you know, like we go through a neighborhood, ding, 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 ding. And I got another one that we created that says 25%. 25%. What is that? That's Luke chapter 8. The four types of soil. Okay? The four types of soil. And it was the fourth soil that brought forth fruit. Okay? Some 30 some 60, some 100 fold. That, that's 25% out of 100. Three out of four didn't bring forth fruit. And what we're saying is that um, now in the, in the investment world, in the investment world, that's a great return. That's like people throw down their mother-in-law to get that kind of return uh, <laughs> because that is a good return. But it is disheartening. It's heartbreaking to realize that there are going to be people you know, that we'll speak to. And as soon as we speak to the first soil, Satan comes and snatches away. Second soil, shallow, you know, emotional response. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when when tests come, when pressures come, for the sake of the word, they fold their tent and go away. Third, third soil. This is the most dangerous soil. This is the most prevalent soil is that thorns and thistles are growing up right alongside of the word of God. And it chokes the cares, the cares of this life, cares and riches. Notice that, please. I just, I am, I'm, man, I'm, thank you. Cares is the negative pole. Oh, what's going on? So wrong. You know, that's so terrible. Riches is the positive pole. You know, I'm rolling in it. I'm like, I'm on top of my game. Everything is amazing, wonderful. He says, both of those do what? Choke the word. So whether you're down and out, or up and out, you're out when it comes to fruit. Now, so 25%. It's amazing. Okay, God gave me 80 people. I just gave 80 or more people gospel track. There you go. Good. Marie says, I leave tracks on the empty supermarket shelves, branches, benches, bus stops. <laughs> go, girl. Come on. That's what, that's what we're talking Listen. We, creativity is our forte. I said creativity is our forte. We are having the mind of Christ. All right? God is not stuck in some place because of this COVID. He's not. And, you know, it's not that we should assemble ourselves together. The Bible instructs us to send. To send. But you know, you know what the big, the big issue is for many churches? Is that they, they, did, they never really got engaged in the great, commission go in all the world preach the gospel to every living creature they they were not actively consistently and deliberately did i say deliberate yes i did deliberately engaged in evangelism confrontational evangelism i'm you know i'm stepping into your your space now six feet apart so i can't step in the space but i like marie i can leave some tracks hi man you know what I'm, if I get a face mask, I'm, I'm looking for a face mask. Anybody know where I can get a face mask where it says John 3.16 or, or God so loved the world. God loves you. Anybody got any face masks like that? I'll buy them. Okay. <laughs> Look at Arbor says, we just need to wear the mask of faith. I like it, yeah. And you know, I, I said to someone, the thing that I detest about the face mask thing is that you're cutting off very important part of my countenance, my countenance, which is what? My smile. That's right. That's right. See, now you got to look at my eyes to see if I'm glaring or I'm gleeful. <laughs> am I glaring or am I gleeful? Okay. And 
That's so important. In human communications, that's so important. In human communications, that's so important. So I think there's a there's a a, a maliciousness behind this mask thing. Okay. Awesome idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, in any case, hopefully we don't have to wear them too long. And that would be that. Well, listen, friends, thank you. Amen. And I always thought they look scary to some rate. Yeah, absolutely. Marie nailed it. Because, you know, I go in the store, and you know what? There's two things that I've noticed. Let me close with it. I think I said this third time. Third close, coming around. I'm going to make a landing, okay? <laughs> Pastor Stevens used to see that. Coming in for a landing. Now, I walk in a store, and, you know, I'm, I got my basket, and I go around the corner, and there's somebody there. They flinch. They flinch. They said, like, oh, you know, I, I can't I can't be too close to you. And who are you? And you look scary with your mask. on. But then there's other people like they're walking. You know, they're walking now because they got to get out of the house. You know? They're walking. They're across the street. I'm across the street. I'm out front. They're across the street. We turn and look at each other. And you know what we do? We wave. We acknowledge each other. There was a time when that wasn't even in the equation. You know, oh, you're over there, I'm over here. God bless you. Go ahead. Why? Because of the need for the reality of a human connection. Acknowledging a human being, another human being. Glory. Glory. You know, when I was in uh, Istanbul, Turkey, and there was a, a huge, huge open space, thousands and thousands, literally, of Turks would gather there because it was open area talking and everything, markets and stores and everything. But it was wide open, Tascom Square, big big area. So, and I'm the you know I'm I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. I'm from America. Okay, so I'm hearing all of this Turkish language and I'm not understanding one stitch of it. And that was okay for one day, but about ten days in, man, you're like going batty. Okay, <laughs> so I thought I said the way I'm gonna soul win. The way I'm going to soul win is <laughs> I just, you know, somebody's got to speak English. I say, Does anybody speak English? And a couple, two, three heads would turn because they, they understood from the Canadians. I said, come here. <laughs> come here. Talk to me. Talk to me. You know, I, my ear is sore from hearing another language that I don't understand. You know, English, even though it's broken English, is sweet to my ear. You know, that's why in Acts 2, Acts 2, it was national languages. Sweet, you know? Like, there was the common business language of Aramaic and uh, Koine Greek. We understand this, okay? But all of a sudden, these, these fishermen, these Galilean fishermen, were declaring the glories of God in a national tongue of those who were concoursing in Jerusalem. There they go. Is it, what was what? Wow, what was that? Did you hear? I, I, I'm hearing, wow, my mother, sweet, pay attention to. Anyway, that's a whole nother, another message. Known languages, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, let's, let's be biblical with this, please. Thank you. Okay, uh, Marie says, uh, uh, okay, uh, send me your phone number on my Facebook private. I can do that, Arbor. Um, and uh, you know what I was thinking? And by the way, if you're watching this broadcast and you never trusted in Jesus Christ, come on. Here's the reality that the, that is true. Without Christ, I am lost. I was born lost. I'll stay lost and I'll die lost. But I can be saved and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Put your trust in Christ, please, please, today and be born again. And if, by the way, you, you do that, you can come on this next broadcast, and you can let me know. That'll be happening. But I'm, I'm going to figure out a way that folks on the broadcast can um, can share, and and I, we can follow up with that. Okay, so Marie says, uh, sadly, uh, uh, oh, thank you for the message. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. And I met an atheist in the woods today, went out walking. Sadly, he thought this is nature's way of, listen to this, this is an atheist ridding the earth of the weak and elderly, but certainly not him. <laughs> no, that's not in the equation. The 
weak and the elderly. I told him it's easy for someone like me who believes in God and the sanctity of life to see how the average atheist could be, become into eugenics. That's right. You know, or euthanasia. There we go. Uh, wow. Very perceptive, Maria. But isn't it amazing? You, you got to encounter this atheist. And, you know, he's hearing something. He thought he knew something about Christians. He thought he knew something about Christians. And then why not if life has no true value? Well, that's true. He agreed. Yeah, okay. Okay, Valerie, thank you. Yes, yes. Grace gave him a track. Oh, before I did. Look at this. Now I got goosebumps. I mean, you are bringing this precious life up in the way that she should go. That's amazing. He was elderly and he just accepted it. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, we'll pray that he reads that track from a child. From a child. Yeah. Okay. That'll, that'll ring true in his mind. That will, might remind him of his grandkids. Yeah. Come on. Lord, use that in Jesus' name. So, you know, we, we don't battle atheists. We don't battle. We war on their behalf through wow. prayer. I said we war on behalf of them in prayer. Yeah, come on. Because, I mean, it was a day I was as blind as a bat. Didn't know anything from straight up, straight down. So dark, didn't know what, what darkness was. Okay. <laughs> Valerie says, yep, yes, Father. Okay, wow, we went the full hour. And some, and thank you, because this is what this broadcast is about. You know, and isn't it interesting? It takes a few minutes, you know, and I, I got to be cognizant of this um, uh, before, you know, folks start rolling, you know, and they, they're they thinking and they put their comments. She's five. Oh, Marie, Grace is five. I remember when she was in the stroller. <laughs> so what does that say? I wouldn't tell me how old I am. We're not going there. Thank you very much. Yes, last time uh, you, I saw her, she was a little baby. That's right. That was that I saw her. That's correct. And uh, yeah, sweet pictures, by the way, of her on your Facebook page. Just so encouraging. Okay, friends, listen. Where's where's my here's my here's my music. Oh, where is it? Oh, there we go. And uh, yeah, come on. Thank you, Eric. God bless you all. Listen, do get out to hear the word of God. Okay, and uh, we'll be broadcasting our Sunday service at 10, 11 a.m. No, 10.30. 10.30, Sunday morning, because we're going to do it indoors. And pray, because we're going to do another drive-in service. I believe next Sunday, Lord willing, weather permitting, we're going to do that. And we're working on that. That's going to be a lot of fun. And then tomorrow night, tomorrow